All right, here we go. Another fresh series spawning down in the bottom right for Alpha X. It is Astrea in the blue. And his opponent spawning up at the top left, the reigning world champion for Dragon Kaitsu Gaming. It is Oliveira in the red. And we are so lucky to get games and get series like this. This is awesome. And I am here for it. I am absolutely here for it. All right. What are we going to be seeing from these two players here? For now, uh, we got a double gas opener from Oliveira. Uh, of course, Oliveira did has taken it uh, a little bit easy. Oliveira has taken it a little bit easy in general. After winning the World Championship, had a great set of runs. Ooh. Oh, no. He accidentally built a pylon there. I think he was testing to, to see, like, where he could build the structure. Ah, a little bit of a misstep right there. Not a huge deal. It's only 25 minerals. But it sucks a little bit, for sure. Slows him down just a tiny bit. But it's, it's not the worst thing in the world. Now, Oliveira does wall Astrea out, and this is just a generally complicated situation for the Protoss because you never know exactly what your opponent's going to do. Uh, this could be no gas with two barracks in the main. This could be no gas with two barracks on the map. This could be a one racks expand with a very tricky second depot. It would be unlikely, but it's possible. Could be a one base all in where they just keep mining uh, resources. But we'll see that it is a Reaper. It is Reaper Reactor, in fact. And Oliveira did take the expansion behind this, but it's a, a very quick starport. And it's going to be a Widowmine drop, most likely. Not building Marines yet, actually, is Oliveira. Focusing on uh, everything else. This is actually really interesting. He focused on the starport and then went for the double Marine. This is a, this is a new build order. This is a build order I haven't seen before. Getting the reactor and then... Uh, does get scouted, by the way, by the Adeption. Getting the reactor and then building uh, Widowmine Starport before getting any Marines is really interesting. And to be honest, with the Reaper, you can kind of keep your opponent at home. I actually really love the build order as a concept. Oh, he wanted so bad to jump up to this position, but there was no opportunity to. And will get deflected. Now, I do like the positioning of Astrea's Starport. Or a gate, I should say. You're not going to be able to see this. And if Estrella keeps this hidden, he could jump the Widowmine drop. Now, he doesn't know exactly what his opponent's doing. It could be a three racks. So that's why he's probably going to move out with his first Phoenix. Yeah, he's going to try and get a scout. We do have Oliver, though. Oh, if he gets that Widowmine shot, it would be really nice. Estrella does see it, though. Does see the targeting reticle. And that is good information. Now, there will be a medevac on the left side, but the fact that the Phoenix is scouted by this Widowmine is already good news for Oliveira because it means he's not going to run into anything. There's always the potential that you don't see the Phoenixes. Your opponent stockpiles them. You move out with like a two or three Widowmine drop, and then your opponent is able to uh, deal with that without taking any damage. But now we see Oliveira is bringing the Marines with this. This is really interesting from Astrea. He's adding on three additional gateways and got a Twilight Council. Is this going to be Blink? No, okay, it is going to be Charge. He was uh, getting up to 150 gas, so I was wondering. Oh, Cyclone does get the lock on, and Astrea feels compelled to use the Phoenix's lift to break that, trying to buy as much time as he can. He actually cancels Charge to get more money. This is a really scary little push coming on in. We do see the Phoenixes are able to lift off a Marine. Marine and a Reaper going down here, but now there's a Liberator. This is such a dangerous position. Such a, uh, an early push from Oliveira. He is adding on barracks behind this. It will transition out. There's the battery overcharge, but a great Widowmine shot from Oliveira. And the Phoenixes are picking off reinforcements in the middle of the map. Stalker staying at range is good. 
Oh, this one Widowmine makes things very complicated. It will get a good shot right there, and the Liberator adds on a lot of DPS as well. The Stalkers are really having some trouble, and a Warpin of Astraea is right into the face of a lot of Marines. Nice lift on the one mine. And we will see the probes getting pulled, but this has already gotten so much value for Oliveira. He will be forced to lift up before he can snipe down that second Phoenix. But this has definitely been a successful push for Oliveira. Still, impressive hold from Astraea to even survive how strong of a strong of a position that was. And it's because he stayed on two bases, because he had these four gates. Oliveira's micro, though, almost carrying the day. Now, there are still a couple of Phoenixes. But the main problem for Astraea right now is the fact that his economy never gets to get online. So even though Oliveira's push does get, well, shoved back, there's Stim, there's combat shields on the way. We've got the three barracks coming online, plus one weapons. Won't be timed out for the Stim and combat shields, but Oliveira, okay, I actually, ooh. I was just gonna say, I actually really like the decision to go for a five racks here because his opponent was behind in economy, but it looks like he says, no, no, no. I want that third CC. So he changes his mind there. I think he actually did do enough damage in order to probably end the game with a five racks, maybe an SCV pull. But I mean, he is still in a solid position economically and he had a ton of workers. So I don't hate the third CC either. I just, ah, uh, you know what? Maybe he, he realized that the Twilight Council probably means charge, but at the same time, a five racks is gonna be good against that because you hit a critical mass of Marines where your opponent's zealots just kind of don't do anything. Oliveira, by the way, can he deal with this little push from uh, Astraea? Astraea's gonna try and draw him out and there is no stim or combat shields just yet. Phoenix is gonna lift up one of the Widowmines. There is one another one behind this. Ooh, it gets a good connection. And there is just too many Marines here. That was still not a bad trade for Astraea. Nine Zealots. Nine Zealots for two Marines, a Medivac, a Widowmine, a Cyclone. Or sorry, 11 Marines. Yeah, that was actually, that was still a decent trade for Astraea. But Oliveira holds, and now he's got the, uh, well, he's got Stim Combat Shields online, plus one weapons about to complete. Astraea does go for the plus one armor here. He was only on the four gateways. Yeah, in the context of the game, I think that was still a decent trade for Astraea, just because he got in before Stim and Combat Shields. But I think I do prefer Oliveira's position. Widowmine gets the kill on one of these Phoenixes. Second one, oh. Two Phoenixes for one mine and an SCV. Yeah, that's a great trade for Oliveira. Astrea. Uh, he, he wasn't anticipating, I think, that second mine. And should have just probably canceled the lift, but I think he assumed the mine was going to go off anyway, so he just kind of committed and said, well, at least I'll kill the first mine. Maybe he gets out of there, maybe he doesn't, but I don't blame him under the in the circumstances. Now, this three ghost timing from Oliveira is going to be so strong. We do see the first Colossus being chrono boosted out here from Astraea. Astraea will have plus one armor in time for the first push, which is going to help a ton with his Zealous. And nice job, he sniped down one of these medevacs. It's actually a rather big pickoff. Ooh, good spot from Oliveira. Knows about Astraea's tricks with these sneaky Zealots. Actually, getting that medevac is huge because Oliveira is going into uh, Viking production. I do love this little anti run by wall, by the way. With the Widow Mines, well, I mean, the Widow Mines are on Burrowing, but just generally, it's going to break up any Zealot run bys. And now we will see a fourth command center coming on down. SCVs being a bit of idiots, a little dopey, trying to block that as best they can, but will uh, will be blocked from doing so. Astraea does add on a second forge for one, two upgrades. Now, plus one armor does not help your Colossus very much, but I do like that he went for it considering how Zealot heavy he's been in the early game. Uh, we do see one Immortal as well to kind of stiffen the composition for Astraea. No extended Thermal Lance though just yet. Of course, he is spending all his money, but I think that's gotta be the next priority because if you get up to three Colossus and you don't have extended Thermal Lance, you are really missing an important piece of the puzzle. Phoenix is just continuously sharking around trying to find some openings. Oliveira, oh, these mines are so handy for him. Able to get, I think two Zealots. Battle report, yep. Tell us, tell us what happened. Yeah, two Zealots for free. 
Uh, looks like the Phoenix did pick off a single SCV, which is nice. Oliveira, great timing on his upgrades. Instantly fires those up. Oh, the Widow Mines will get lifted here. Well, that's really nice. And I do like that the Observer Unseaged left its Observer mode, but still gets scanned, picked off. Good job from Oliveira to be right on top of that and to have those scans available. Astrea getting a War Prism here, but I don't think he can attack just yet. He's only on the two Colossi, and he still doesn't have extended Thermal Lance. He will have a 1-2 timing, which is going to be a slight upgrade advantage. I really don't think there's a whole lot he can do. Oliver scanning the middle of the map. He really wants to know where his opponent's army is. And this is, this is actually so many Zealots for Astrea right now. He needs to find a way to trade some of these out, or he is going to be in a lot of trouble. 28 Zealots. That is just, that's too many. That is too many Zealots for a maxed out army. Uh, if the Terran is on the supply that they want to be on, and there's eight Vikings to deal with the Colossi, there's a good number of Marauders as well, and there's a ton of Marines, which is going to do even better against those Zealots. Now, the plus two armor is great, and we have this plus three armor getting fired up as well. That's going to help a lot. But two, two upgrades for Oliveira are coming online pretty shortly. It is triple Robo, by the way, from Estrella. Ooh, nice War Prison pickup to save that Colossus. Got to be careful. It's a lot of Vikings, and you don't want to lose the War Prism with the Colossus inside. Once again, another scan does see that there's Disruptors. And that's going to discourage uh, Oliveira from attacking in on this fifth base. Great defensive... Uh, just defensive movement and great kind of situational awareness here from Oliveira to just be like, yeah, I don't really have a timing right now. At the very least, he wants to wait for his 2-2. Now, he is getting prepared for the next stage as well, adding on the plus one ship weapons. And of course, that plus two ship weapons, there we go. We got the Fusion Core second starport coming on in. That is going to be the, the big power spike for the Liberators. Ooh, Oliver doesn't want to fight the 4-2-2. He will get some huge EMPs. Disruptors lagging behind a little bit. Great splits from Oliver on the bottom side and the top side as well. War Prism will get his warp in. Disruptor Shot does grab a couple of Marauders, but Oliver gets a really great fight with some excellent splits. Even though... Oh, he's got to be careful. Okay, good job. Does dodge that. Scanning ahead is the most crucial thing for Oliveira right now. Battery Overcharge going to get popped. Good split, but it's still a decent Disruptor shot. And we will see another Disruptor coming on in. That might be enough to break the momentum of Oliveira. And yeah, with all the bruised up Marines, it certainly will be. Scan going to come in from Oliveira, and he sees... Yeah, that's a few too many Disruptors. That started out so well for Oliveira, but the static defenses from Astrea really allowed him to stabilize. Still, Oliveira comes out massively ahead in that fight, even with the small overcommitment. By the way, great observer in the middle of the map. Astrea will retake an upgrade lead for the moment. And we do have a, wow, a six Viking flyby. I'll take things I never expected to see in this game for 800, Alex. Ooh, little drop on the top side will get kind of caught by the stalkers but it's not enough and that's a kill not a cancel on this base that is a nice find right there for Oliveira DTs are going to come in on the top side meanwhile Oliveira kind of rotating through the middle looks like a pylon it did get picked off oh we're going to see a big jump from Astrea on this army in the middle finds a ghost and a couple of bio units Astrea getting some really good trades meanwhile the Vikings in the main base did get cleaned up by DTs Oliveira being forced to retreat and losing a lot of army. And now he's attacking into the bottom side when he really can't afford to lose army supply. He might kill this Nexus, but even if he does, he's throwing away so much army to do so. Oh, oh, good. <laughs> I was going to say, Estrella might have just killed his own Nexus. He does cancel it, though, in order to, uh, to make sure he doesn't disrupt it himself. There might have been enough HP to survive, but I'm glad that we didn't find out. Now, Oliveira is about to hit a huge power spike with 3-3 three, three fusion core uh, upgrade and plus two ship weapons on these Liberators coming online. But this is a huge moment of vulnerability for him. He threw away a lot of army supply. He killed a lot of economy, but he is down in supply right now, down in army supply. Disruptor shots are decent. Planetary Fortress is the linchpin of this defense right now. Oliveira is adding on Liberators, by the way. Ooh, but DT's on the top side. Will find his base from Oliveira. Will force it back. 
and that will certainly allow Australia to continue on in this game. Ooh, DT's eating some huge Widowmine shots. He's going to lose almost all the DT's. Only two of them going to get away. Was focused on the attack on the top side. The Raiders need to siege up here defensively for Oliveira. I could get this command center. That's, that's a nice little find. Probably should have lifted that a little sooner, but there is a lot of chaos coming on in. Meanwhile, I think... Was there a War Prism in the main base? No. No, it doesn't look like it. Uh, Oliver did save this topside base. He needs to get some static defenses, some missile turrets, repair this base up. Because he did lose one of his command centers, and Astrea, during all this, has rebuilt his next eye. He's about to be on at six bases once again. Oliveira, though, as long as he can get out to a good number of Liberators, I still like his position. On Babylon, these Liberators are so good. Will this missile turret... It does not provide detection. Just out of range here. There's the War Prism in the main base, by the way. EMP does reveal the DTs. Oh, and that Liberator really giving the assist, but a big attack coming in on the, the fourth base location. Huge! Huge planetary fortress shots coming in. 11 kills on that, getting a lot of stalkers. Look at how low these warp prisms are, by the way. The double prism play is solid. Stray out, really taxing the multitasking of Oliveira. And it's this observer that is MVP right Hero, now in this game. Astrea is just all over Oliveira in this one. Oh, observer does get scanned. Ooh, we'll get away, though. Nice job from Astrea. The Observer Speed coming in clutch. Actually, he's got Observer Speed and War Prism Speed. I am speed. Ka-chow! Uh, we do have this Nexus coming in on the bottom side. That's the seventh base of Astrea. We do need to see a Viking or two, I think, from Oliveira to clear out these War Prisms. Astrea does not want to let Oliveira stabilize on five bases. And that's why he's rotating to the top side here. There are a lot of disruptors. EMP is going to try and come on in. The splits are not quite enough. There's just so many purification Novas. That was like eight Novas, seven Novas getting fired out there. Gets another couple Marauders. And Astrea is on the verge of breaking through. Liberators are going to rotate over. And blinking into them is not the most appetizing idea. He does lose a few Stalkers. But more importantly than anything, Olivero holds the base. And I talk about the plus two Liberator timing for anyone who's not familiar. Liberators, in normal situations, they three-shot Stalkers. And after an EMP, they two-shot them. With plus two on the Liberators, they uh, two-shot Stalkers from full HP, full shields. And after they've been EMP, they one-shot them. So this position is devastating. This actually cannot be broken, I don't think, by Astrea. The Disruptors need to get some huge hits, and it's just not going to happen. But we do see a counterattack coming on in on the other side. That's a lot of Blink Stalkers and Blink DTs. Planetary Fortress is going to try and hold, but it will go down. Now, the Stalkers, a lot of them will fall, and Astrea does lose a lot to kill that. And more importantly for Oliveira, he's got another command center ready to, to land here. 15 probes went down on the other side. Oliveira, though, I think you just back away at this point. Yeah. Oh. Actually, hang on. He's going to continue to go forward. Ooh, if he can get into the main base. Astrea does see this army coming. Liberator's going to try and siege up in the natural. And the SimCity is not going to do Astrea too many favors. He's getting bottled up. He needs to blink it on top of this. There we go. There's the blink. But the Liberators are going to absolutely wreak havoc on these Stalkers. Is there enough to deal with this? The answer is going to be just barely for Astrea. Nice target fire from the Liberators. On top of the, uh, on top of those disruptors on the tail end, recognizing he wasn't going to kill all of the stalkers. Nice job from Oliver to catch these DTs that had just killed a bunch of SCVs. So many workers have gone down. This has been a banger of a game already, and it is so even right now. They are dead even in supply. Three thousand resources lost. Actually, really about twenty-four hundred resources lost. Disruptors are going to come on in from the back. Astrea trying to jump this army. The Disruptors. Ooh, good last second split from Oliveira. And Astrea, oh no, these stalkers getting caught by the terrain. The Liberators are continuing to be a big problem here. And Oliveira will set up in a really strong siege position. This actually zones out two bases simultaneously and leaves these Robos exposed. Liberators going to continue to move forward. 16 probes go down. And if the Liberators set up at this base, Astrea will not be able to deal with them. Yeah, there they go. Meanwhile, counterattack coming on in of Blink DTs. Oliveira does pull the SCVs. He is going to lose the base. However, 
EMP comes on in, it will be a little bit of a punish. Oh, how many DTs go down? Actually, not as many as I thought. Australia gonna try and get in on the back of this. The, that's a lot of stims coming in from Oliveira. Disruptor shot. We'll get a couple of bio units. The Liberators. Oh, the Liberators are gonna kill all the Disruptors and gets an Immortal here. And in fact, Astrea, he nearly wins the, or uh, pardon me, Oliveira nearly wins the fight. And with that, he is gonna take a massive lead in this game. Astrea still trying to find value with these DTs. There might, no, there's just a few too many bio units to hold at this base. And now, now Oliveira stabilizes once again on five bases. Astrea has been knocked down to, well, I mean, really, he just has half mining on this base. He's got, he's got maybe one mining base to Oliveira's two, two mining bases. Yeah, this, this is just too much now. What a game this has been, though. A fantastic showing from both players. Oliveira, look at these scans. He really wants to see what his op opponent is up to right now. Scans this base, even as if it's rebuilt. Scans for the army here. Scans for this base. And I think he realizes he can just chill now. Oh, I love this spot on Marine. Oliveira does so many things well in this game. You really can see why he became the world champion here. Great EMP right there. Actually, he does catch an Observer. Straya able to snipe down a medevac, but this is feeling like an inevitable victory right now for Oliveira. Blink Stalkers are not going to cut it against this much bio. And there it is. GG gets called. What a game between these two players. All right, here we go. Spawning up in the top right. From Alpha X, it is Astrea. In the blue. And his opponent. Spawning down in the bottom left for Dragon Kaitsu Gaming. It is Oliveira. In the red. Astrea sending an instant probe across the map, by the way. Basically, yeah, basically instantaneously. Which is kind of cool. Kind of nifty. Going to see what he can get done with that. And already going to be a little bit disruptive. Says, you don't get to build your barracks where you want to build this. I'm a big fan of that in general. Just uh, being a nuisance. Anything you can do to disrupt your opponent's game plan is always a good thing. Now, you do have to do a little bit of this fancy micro to justify the cost of this early scout. And simply by forcing the SUV to be pulled, you are you are already mostly paying for it. But it does slow down your build, so you want to make sure you slow down your opponent's build a little bit. But yeah, there's there was some brilliant moves there from Oliveira in that game number one. Uh, the Liberator target fire on top of the Disruptors was fantastic, especially in that natural expansion when he got the big siege up. Uh, there was some other great moments, some big EMPs on the DTs. Astrea was really throwing everything he could at Oliveira. Oh, this is cute. Oh, this is really cute. He builds the SOS pylon. This is the pylon that SOS came up with as the counter to Maru's playstyle. When Maru was proxying every single game in... Uh, well, in basically every tournament. Building this pylon to prevent a full wall, it is it takes you so many buildings to wall this off when there's two depots here. Uh, and of course, Astrea forced this out by building the barracks out of position. Now, this is kind of a bit of a bluff play. Hang on, we're not going to see a shield battery. No, we're not. Uh, this is a bit of a bluff play because uh, Astrea did open up with the gate nexus. So he's not actually going to be able to do anything really with this. And in fact, he's even cutting his second gateway unit in order to get out the quick uh, Twilight Council. Funnily enough, the Reaper did get sent home from Oliveira. So he kind of he kind of bluffed sending this forward. And it did keep Astrea from sending his Adept forward. So a nice little, nice little mind game here from Oliveira to keep this Adept at home and give him time, ironically... By not adding the DPS to the Reaper, it gave him more time to clear that pylon. So sometimes just bashing your head in and throwing all units into the attack is not the best play. That's a lesson I could take to heart, but never will. 
uh sometimes finesse is what is called for and that's exactly what we see from Oliveira here very nice to see uh now speaking of Oliveira and aggression and finesse he did go for a very quick two barracks now adding on a third and this has a couple of options now we'll see if he starts up tank production I think he's going to get combat shields off this but it would still be possible this could be an all-in with you know a very quick oh he does start up a siege tank here yeah this could definitely be an all-in however at the same time if he does build this tank it means that when he would have to build the tech lab he wouldn't have uh combat shields timed out particularly well we'll see what he does with this barracks it's going to be the tech lab next or what it's going to be may very well just add on a starport though and just play standard from here and actually with the marauder that already seems a little bit likely Oliveira does scout the third Nexus. Did he see the Twilight Council? No, he actually hasn't even gotten into the main base yet. Hasn't been able to do so. Good job from Estrella to deny the scouting. And we do see the combat shields coming in. We'll swap the barracks onto the tech lab after building the one tank. So the tank is just defensive in nature. Can be, of course, used aggressively later because siege tanks are just good units. Ooh, are we going to see a blink? Nope. He, I suppose, doesn't want to reveal blink. Oh, but it might cost him a probe. No, good micro from Astrea there. However, he, he actually does let the Reaper into the natural. Oh, he is going to lose a probe. Yes, he will. Man, god damn, so good from Oliveira. Now, a little bit sloppy from Astrea to leave that opening, but you never expect the Reaper to get down to the natural expansion like that and cause you so many issues. This is very interesting. Two more sentries. Huh. That will slow down Astrea's tech a lot. Now, he did scout. What did he scout to make him see or make him think? You know what? Okay, this is the this is actually the Ryung play or or a similar theory to the Ryung play from IEM Katowice 2022, where he was kind of skipping harassment and going very early for three barracks factory, delaying the starport, but then getting it and the first two units are instantly double medevac. And the timing, look at this timing. This is so fast and sharp, and it's really difficult to deal with. It really requires a, a, a lot of a lot of response from the Protoss, and Oliveira did not build a Cyclone. He built this Siege Tank, so his, his attack has even more oomph, but that's why we see those sentries warping on in. We will see a couple of force fields getting dropped. Oliveira electing not to pick up his units, going for the sentry instead. He does get the Immortal, and actually Oliveira really starting to find some value here. Immortal does start targeting down the Marauders, but a little bit late. Stalkers will blink out, and they do get back to the safety of the shield battery. Good cancel on that shield battery. Battery overcharge a little bit early, but Oliveira will get turned away, and that is the big deal. And Estrella, this is not like game number one where he was only on two bases and didn't have the greatest worker count. He is up 12 probes, so this was a reasonably... Not super ded ded dedicated attack from Oliveira because he's still on a decent economy. Actually, he's on a great SCV count, to be honest. Ooh, nice job from Estrella. Does actually deny the SCV and kills a Marine with this one adept. Still, Oliveira has Estrella in some big trouble right here. The two Immortals going down was a big deal, especially with the heavy Marauder uh, composition. Now, Battery Overcharge, because it was used so early, it's almost off cooldown again. But Estrella does still have uh, some, some issues here. Plus one weapons is done. We do see the Shield Battery getting depowered just as Battery Overcharge was about to come off cooldown. Barrier will come, well, will become available. Widow Mines, ooh, targeting on the Immortal, will take it down. And Estrella is just going to get run over by this push. If Battery Overcharge were available, I think that's a drastically different fight. But Astrea, I mean, he is just struggling to hold against this continued aggression. He's very close to clearing this, and Zealot's going to try and bait the Widow Mines out, but they don't have charge yet. Oh, man, Astrea really just needs, like, one more warp in to try and clean this up. But Oliveira is not giving them the time. More Stalkers warping in, not Zealots. And here comes the Pro Bowl. Big, big blink forward in on top of this, but it's that is just going to be... A little bit too many losses here for Astrea. The Immortal once again does join up, and this will maybe be a, a break on this position. But that was 14 workers. That's still a lot of army going down, and Oliveira's continued aggression, this incredible Blitzkrieg, has just found so much value. 
I'm really impre impressed that Estrella's held on, but I don't know how much further he can hold on. And this is actually interesting. Oliver are not going to use the Wood of Mines with the army, which is actually... This might give Estrella the opportunity to defend perfectly and maybe find himself in a good position. However, these are permacloaked Wood of Mines. They do burrow on up, get four probes in the, the third base. The army is rotating around, continuing to occupy Estrella's attention. Another four probes go down. And, oh, okay, looks like uh, Oliveira not going to move in during all this. It is plus one versus plus one for now. Depot top hat has to be dropped for Oliveira. Actually, he wasn't supply blocked. Maybe he had just become unsupply blocked. Estrella, he really just needs a moment to catch his breath, and Oliveira's just not giving that to him. Fourth Command Center on the way, 2-1 upgrades are on the way for Oliver. He's getting a Ghost Academy, so he's already preemptively countering the High Templar tag. Even if this were a closer game, this would be a tough position for Estrella. But, well, Oliveira, he's got these Liberators here. The Widow Mines, not going to be friendly fired. And that was really the only thing that could have maybe turned the tides of this fight. But it will be Oliveira powering through Estrella here. Astrea putting together a very strong and stalwart defense. But the world champ is the world champ for a reason. And he will take the 2-0, advances on to the next round. And I gotta say, I am just genuinely impressed with this guy over and over and over again. Thank you very much for tuning in. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Hit that like and subscribe button if you did. And we'll catch you on the flip side.